for the average American, we can take what we learn in athletics and kind of apply it to our lives as we go about the busyness of our day and understanding that there are lots of Americans who have very physically active jobs. Um, so I always like to explain to people what happens within a couple of hours of eating food. Um, so we understand that when we put food in our mouth and it goes down through our stomach and it's absorbed into our blood system, um, it's not just calories that really are, are being taken up by the body. But what's being taken up are all of the macronutrients, the carbohydrates, the proteins, the fats. But more importantly, it's the micronutrients. It's the minerals, the vitamins, the phytochemicals, and the antioxidants. So if we just look at like the average American diet, when we put in sugar, fat, and salt into our body, a couple of things happen. First, and we can talk about this um, in more detail too, but it's, it triggers the reward system in our brain, the dopamine reward system. So sugar, fat, and salt activate the dopamine reward system, just like nicotine, methamphetamine, and cocaine. So they have the same effect, creating some dependence or food addiction, causing us to be drawn back to those same foods. But within just a couple of hours of eating these foods, it goes down to the body, it's absorbed into the bloodstream, and then it penetrates our cells. And within a couple of hours, sugar causes measurable inflammation inside of our artery walls, causing damage to the lining of the artery, the endothelial cells, making us more susceptible to atherosclerosis, and even more susceptible to inflammation that can lead to cancer. We also know that within a couple of hours of eating sugar, it suppresses our immune system, and it's specifically the natural killer cells that help us to fight infections. And that can suppress our immune system for four to five hours. So if we kind of understand this, you know, Americans having sugar-based breakfast, sugar-based lunch, and sugar-based dinner, they're suppressing their immune system throughout the course of the day, making themselves more susceptible to these infections that we encounter. Give me an example of, of a sugar-based meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So if we look at sugar-based meals in America today, um, we have breakfast cereals. And if you look at even the healthy breakfast cereals, they contain sugars. Uh, breakfast bars, often full of sugars. A lot of the juices that we think are healthy, full of sugars. And actually, the number one breakfast drink in America today, soda, full of sugars. So it's, it's not surprising that we're starting our day with tons of sugars flooding our system, having this tremendous negative effect. Then we transition to midday when we get snacks and people get a big coffee with sugar. We have another bar or bagels, which break down quickly into sugar in our body. We transition to lunchtime. Typically, we have another sugar, often a soda drink. Afternoon, people hit the soda machine, have another soda, uh, another cup of coffee with sugar. And by evening, we finish our meal with dessert ice cream, some kind of a cake. We, you know, so we're eating sugar continually throughout the day. What's interesting about sugar, when we look back 100 years ago, 1890 or so, the average person consumed five pounds of sugar per person per year. Fast forward today, estimates are from 170 to 190 pounds of sh sugar and sweeteners per person per year. So we have added a tremendous load of sweeteners into our system over the last 100 years. One of the mistaken ideas in our country today is that calories are the problem. And calories, you know, we add uh, the problem that it's coming from sugar. So when we look at trying to minimize calories to reduce our weight and fight the obesity epidemic, we simply think by getting rid of sugars that we can solve the problem. So we have transitioned now to artificial sweeteners. And there are a host of them on the market. And the studies that are coming out show that you know, artificial sweeteners have some significant negative implications in our lives. They can trigger hunger. They can cause disruption of our, the way that we think. And there was actually a study just out of Oregon State University. They actually had to stop the study, people consuming half the recommended amount um, of, of artificial sweeteners because it caused such mental distress. Uh, so these artificial sweeteners have real negative impact on our body. and We can't trick our body with these artificial sweeteners. When we look at the, the way that sweeteners naturally occur in, in our environment, it's in plants. And it's, they're provided with fiber, with phytochemicals, with minerals and vitamins that help our bodies process the sugar in a way that is not harmful to the body. So it's interesting, when we look at the fat on our bodies, and we have added quite a bit of fat to our bodies in America, uh, you know, in the last uh, 50 years, but fat is, um, it's not a benign tissue. We often like to joke about fat, saying it's, you know, it's our spare tire, it's our saddlebags, but fat is really a negative tissue on our body. Um, it's interesting, toxins are stored in fat, 
And when there are studies done to measure the toxin load in our human bodies, they measure it in fat. And the studies have shown that we have on average 600 different chemicals now stored in our fat, which tells us we're being exposed to chemicals on an ongoing basis in our, in our world. We just live in a modern world that is full of chemicals everywhere we turn. And that's where it's stored. And those have some long-term effect on our health. So losing fat, is important because it's a way for shedding these chemicals and these toxins, which you know sheds a load of stress upon the body. It's also interesting, fat has another negative impact on our body. Fat actually works against our health. The studies show that fat pumps out inflammation into our body. It's a, it's a factory for inflammation. So the more fat we have in our body, the more it generates inflammation. It also activates hormones like leptin, it's uh, actually produced by the fat cells, and that creates a number of problems, activating our appetite. It promotes this process called angiogenesis, which is the abnormal growth of blood vessels into cancer cells and our fat cells. It creates inflammation and inflammation in the artery walls that can lead to atherosclerosis. So our fat is working against us in a number of ways. Uh, and so that is why it's so important to really focus on getting healthy. When we're adding plant-based food into our life, it comes with all the phytochemicals and antioxidants that your body needs to process the toxins as it's shedding the fat. And that's part of the reason that plant-based nutrition um, makes it easier to lose the fat. Also, with plant-based nutrition, it, it normalizes that angiogenesis process and actually cuts off the blood supply to the fat cells and the cancer cells. So as you're eating plant-based food, not only are you losing fat, but you're reducing inflammation and you're normalizing many of these body processes that were promoting disease. You know, it's very interesting when we talk about optimum weight, I think we really have a, a distorted view of what is a healthy weight. And I know I have some patients that are, are very heavy and they will often say to me, Dr. Stoll, you look very thin, are you sure you're healthy? And uh, I laugh and I say, you know, I'm six feet, 180 pounds, I'm just fine. But you know, it just points out the fact that we, we don't really understand what a healthy weight looks like because we've come so far in the wrong direction. Um, I have a slide that I often show in my presentations of healthy children in the year 1900 and contrasted with a picture of children today. And it's often shocking to the audience because they see just in those two images how far we've transitioned from those 1900s when the children were thin, fit, and healthy. So this distorted view of weight and health, I think, really brings up this, this issue where people think that people eating a plant-based diet are too thin. Really, you know, if we can pinch more than an inch around our waist, we probably have too much fat, understanding that fat works against us. So when we are eating a plant-based diet, we have learned then to eat when we're hungry and we don't eat when we're not hungry. And so in this way, our body learns to optimize our weight and we find that with plant-based diet, people stay within a couple of pounds of an optimal weight because they're being driven by natural hunger signals.